All right, we are here with our second installment of the LA Guitar Hang, featuring my good buddy Andy Waddell, Mr. Amazing Guitar Player, and otherwise known as Andalos from Kazakh, he's a very strong and powerful man. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Only known to you that way. Yes, I call him Andalos. I buy him on the internet for a very cheap price. He's very good, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you've been doing that voice for, I mean, I, I admire the commitment. You've been doing that oh, voice yeah. for as long as I've known you. Probably like, what, like, I mean, 12 years at least? Whenever Borat first came out, my wife almost throws me out of the house with it. But the funny thing is, is I've been a fan since day one. And just last weekend, I was eating lunch and I'm up, I have my phone, you know, and I'm, I'm watching old Borat episodes and I was still like, this is the greatest thing ever. It's unbelievably hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's why you and I get, a, get along so well because, or one of the reasons, because I have a thing like that, as you know, because uh -huh. uh, we love to leave each other crazy messages. Oh my God. And, <laughs> and you know, that, that I'm sure you've gotten some of my Ron Forrester messages. Mm -hmm. And that's a character that I came up with years ago. I mean, yeah. I've been doing that for, for probably 10 years the as well. The guy? Yeah, and I don't even know, you know, he's, he's just some crazy, like, you know, survivalist nut job from <laughs> Bakersfield. And, uh, you know, and, and, but I, I've, I've stuck with it this, this whole time. And I'm, I'm, I'm never getting rid of it. So for those of you who don't know, when Andy and I call each other, we never pick up. And we just leave these long, long messages. And sometimes, I think one of them that you left me was like 10 minutes long. And it just went on and on. It was so freaking funny. It was hilarious. I, I, think, I think on that one, it finally just cut me off. I didn't even hang up. I had, I had more. Like, I was going and going. You know, the creative juices were flowing. And then yeah. it finally just cut me off. It's like, you're, you're done, dude. You've had enough. I do that with a few of my friends, not everybody, but I have a couple friends that will do different characters and sometimes I'll do like Borat or I'll do like, you know, some of them would be, I could get in trouble because they borderline <laughs> offensive, but, oh, uh, yeah. and then sometimes I'll do like a really soft one. I do the one from the Jerky Boys called Pablo Honey, which is the name of the first um, Radiohead record. Oh yeah, I, lo I love that album. Yeah. But it's it's this old, um, I guess, Latina woman, and she's like, uh, uh, Pablo, I miss you, Pablo. Have I done the that yet? The last message you left me was one of those. Oh, it was? Yeah, it was great, man. I'm, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, so for those of you who are uh, listening, um, Andy's one of the great guitar players in the L.A. scene and a good friend of mine. And we've played together many times over the years and have known each other a long time. And uh, Andy has an interesting story because he is currently getting over the COVID virus. So can you, you want to talk a little bit about what it was like and how it went down and what happened? You don't have to get too into detail, but it might be interesting for some of the people listening. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, one of the things that that blows my mind is like, you know, we've seen this, we've seen this virus, you know, obviously it's gotten crazier and crazier in the spread since the reopening and everything is just, you know, out of control. And, right. uh, and so I knew that the next thing that was coming, I mean, it's okay. It's going to be very soon here where someone I know gets it. Sure. You know, one, uh, hopefully not one of my family members, but it's going to be very soon where one of my friends or or family members gets this thing. I mean, that's, that's where we're headed. Right. And, uh, I didn't think I was going to be the first fucking one to get it. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm the first one of the people I know to, to get it. Do you, and you said you think you may have gotten it. We don't have to say his name or anything, but from someone on a gig, you think that's, that's what happened. I, I mean, I'm, I'm 99% sure because, uh, yeah, I was, I was doing a gig, um, and yeah, I was actually doing quite a bit for like a little while, like right kind of when the sort of reopening started happening. Not real. I mean, there was nothing really happening uh, in L.A. as far as live gigs. But, you know, as you know, like down down south or Orange County and like San Diego and, uh, you know, I was doing some stuff down there. And um, yeah, so I mean, it was cool. I was, you know, I was stoked of starting to see at least like 
things starting to head in the right direction as far as work-wise at least. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so where I got it, and, and of course, I mean, it, it was it was the, the goddamn 80s band. Uh, oh, so, flash bands. <laughs> flash bands. So, and it was the first gig, it was one of the first gigs they had done, like coming back, you know, for all these months. And you weren't and wearing a mask, huh? You probably can't wear a mask in that. Wear, yeah, you can't wear a mask in that because you're, yeah. you know, you've seen the show, you're jumping, or, like there's all this choreography and stuff. And um, yeah, so for, for those of you who don't know, it's, it's you know, was a gig that I started doing about a year ago and, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an eighties thing and like a corporate band and, and there's all this choreography, short shorts, and, you know, I get to shake my wing in people's faces and stuff. And, and, uh, I basically, uh, yeah, I basically get to act like the, the jackass that I really am at heart. So, uh, but I digress. So anyway, it, it's of course that it was at that gig because it was, it was in a club, um, down in Lake Forest and, like, you know, nobody was wearing a mask. Everyone's all these drunk uh, idiots slobbering all over each other. And I wonder, that's what it is. Yeah. And you know, like wh- where I think I got it, because I, I remember even thinking when this was happening, because there's a part in the show and it's like right at the beginning, it's like the second song. And, uh, you know, part of the choreography is, is we're playing this Jesse's girl uh, and that, uh, uh, what is that? Who wrote that song? You know what I'm talking about. Springfield. Yeah, Springfield. Yeah. So, so, um, so anyway, like I'm, I'm standing up in like center stage and then the other two guys, uh, like the singer and the bass player, they come right. They're literally this close to my face and that's, and they're, they're kind of like touching my face and caressing me. And it's like, a, uh, it's like a, you know, funny kind of sexual thing, but, uh, did you feel yourself you know, getting sick at that moment? You're like, at that I'm moment, I, yeah, I could feel them breathing on me. I could feel both their breaths like in my face. I, and I remember thinking there, I'm standing there, and you got to keep a straight face. You know, and, and, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I can feel them breathing on me. This is not, this is not cool right now. Oh my God. And, and so that was, that was on a Friday. And, um, and I started getting sick uh, the Thursday of the next week. That's when I started feeling uh, a couple symptoms. We and were together the next day, Amber. We were talking, right? You were like, "I don't know if we should get together." Well, that's because that. Well, that's because um, <laughs> that's because before that, um, I was. Uh, I actually thought that I might be sick, but I got a test and it came back negative. And I actually didn't think I was sick. I just I was having some headaches. And they've been going on for a couple of weeks and I never get headaches. So I, you know, I just figured it would be wise since I had like, you know, gigs coming up and stuff and, you know, that I, I should get tested just to make sure. But yeah. that, that came, I got that, I got my test back like the next day. So I was still able to, to do that. But, but um, yeah, and that was negative. So that was like unrelated. That was just a, you know, that was wow. a scare. And so, so you never, you're feeling good now. It seems like you never really got, ill right maybe just cold symptoms for a few days or what no no it it was it was pretty i mean i i i wasn't you know hospitalized or anything but i'd say getting that virus is about as much fun as forced anal (laughs) it's it It depends on the situation (laughs) uh, yeah i mean i guess that could be a good thing for some people but it's not really my thing um so it was like i mean yeah like my symptoms weren't I, there were some pretty gnarly symptoms, but it, there wasn't any point of it where I was like, you know, worried that I was going to die or that I was going to have to go to the hospital or anything. I wasn't suffering really badly, but like a bad um, flu. It, it was different than a flu, though. That, that, that's, that's why it was scary, because it's like, um, you know, because I just, you know, there, there were certain times in that it was like where I was scared just because it's like, man, what is... I'm not in like a necessarily a lot of pain or suffering right now, but like I haven't felt like this before. So what is happening to my body and my brain right now? Because there were a couple points and actually I just, just like, you know, a few days ago, did I really start feeling really back to normal as far as like, I felt brain dead, like completely brain dead at a couple points. Wow. Uh, like my last day of symptoms. I mean, I was like, that was the weirdest thing. And the scariest thing is like, I couldn't, I couldn't think. 
I remember I was trying to order groceries online and my girlfriend, Claire, she got it too. Um, cause we lived together. So, and we were both, we were trying to order groceries. It took us like three hours. Cause we were, we were like retarded seriously. Wow. And I was like, that was, that was one of the scariest things. And then there was one night. And then another crazy thing is that, and I had heard this happening for other people is that you, you think you're getting better and then the symptoms can come back or dip. See, in my case, so I was, I started getting sick on a Thursday and then like Friday, Saturday, that's when I had a fever. Um, yeah. And it was like, you know, I had congestion fever, um, you know, just felt really out of it, really drained and fatigued. And, uh, but you know, it wasn't too bad. Um, and then like on Sunday, on the Sunday, I remember I started feeling better. I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm over it. I, I think I'm, I think I'm good to go. And, um, and then like, yeah, and then the next day, Monday, like I was even better. I was like, you know, I felt higher energy levels, still not back to normal, but I was like, okay, I'm, I'm definitely over this thing. And then that night, that Monday night, like I got knocked with completely different symptoms. Then I got the body aches, which are, are you know, one of the main symptoms. Wow. And like, I felt, I felt that night, like all of a sudden it hit me, like my entire body, every joint. And every muscle in my body just hurt. Like it was like I was 150 years old. I could barely walk. Wow. And, and that was that part was painful. Um, it was weird. And then yeah, and then that was the next day where I was completely I felt brain dead. Um, wow. But but that those body aches that was only really for that night. And then that next day, like I was still kind of sore, but it wasn't like it was that night. And then it was that next day, you know, like uh, uh, you know, with the brain dead thing, and then kind of that night is when the symptoms went away and then they hadn't, you know, now it's been a couple of weeks or yeah, a couple of weeks now, I guess. I don't know. I lost track of time, but you know, I'm, I'm fine now. They haven't come back since. And, and I bet a lot of that when you're going through this, there's probably all this fear in your head from watching the news and this and that thinking like, Oh, I might be on a respirator and when's it going to hit me? And so then you probably deal with all that crap in your head too. Like it's going to get a lot worse maybe yeah and, and there's certain people you got to not talk to i have this one friend who's no one in anyone in our circle would know he's not a musician but he's a guy that used to be my neighbor i'm still really good friends with and uh and anyway he he's like uh, like i he was one of the first people i called like when i got it and talked to him about it and and uh and he was like, oh, you, you don't want that. And he's sending me all these, I'm going to send you this link. And, and you know, you just, cause this could have, you know, terrible long-term or permanent effects on every vital order. I was like, you idiot, man. You think I want it? How is this going to help me right now? Moron, don't send me that shit. And I already, I already had, had read those articles and, you know, had heard about those studies and stuff. So I, I didn't want to think about any of that, of course. And Yeah, you don't. Know, if you if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen anyway. You don't need to hear about it. <laughs> I know, like, yeah, and that was like right when I was in the middle of it. Like, yeah, that was that was not cool. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're you're looking good now and you're feeling better. So that's awesome, dude. Well, handsome was never the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, Andy and I we met years ago, but one of our our favorite things that we do together was we play in a band that's probably not happening anymore unfortunately the, yeah. uh, the translucent ham sandwich band with evan stone we've been doing that for years and years and man we've had so many fun gigs with that huh oh yeah, yeah. that's funny because I, I i was gonna bring that up actually on our first when we were talking about our our characters and our messages that we leave with each other because yeah. evan's one of the other people uh, yeah, I leave Evan some of those messages. Oh, you do? I have, I have yeah. And, and and he loves them. And, and he's – I was disappointed, though, because he's, he's talked a long time. He's like, oh, I, I want to use some clips. I want to use some of those messages for the show. Yeah. But he, he, he never ended up doing it. So I was I was hoping for my, you know, big big time to shine, but it never happened. Well, for those of you who don't know, um, the Translucent Ham Sandwich was a band that Evan Stone put together years ago. And he's had many, many musicians that come in and out of the band, but Andy and I have been the longest running musicians on guitar, at least. He has like Dave Goldberg plays sax and Abe Byrne plays flute. And uh, I think the bass players kind of move around Steve Billman, Billman right? Steve yeah. Billman. And other people. Yeah. We've had like Edwin Livingston. 
the good thing is Evan always gets great musicians in the band and it's a great band because it's, it's um, completely improvised. We all wear these crazy costumes. It's like a circus. It's an absolute freak show. We improvise all the music and there's all kinds of, um, you know, jugglers, transvestites, uh, yeah, fire, fire breathers, fire and... breathers, magicians, belly dancers. Yeah, it's a total freak show and one of the most fun bands I've ever been in. In ever, it's just you know, it's a blast. And you show up, and and Andy and I have carte blanche. We can do whatever we want and <laughs> play all kinds of crazy shit. I do all kinds of loops and effects, and Andy shreds killer solos and. It's a fun band, and, and we haven't done it in a while, and Evan's still, you know, he's out there. He's a conspiracy nut, and, uh, you know, we, you know, if you're listening, Evan, we, we miss you and the band. We want to start it up again, and if there's ever any clubs left after this shit, you know, maybe we'll play again. Yeah, God, man, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a scary thought. It's depressing, um, man. I, I miss live music so much. I, I talk about this. I'm gonna, every week I'm going to tell everybody how much I miss live music. Even as a fan, even if it's not my gig, I just miss seeing live music. Actually, tonight, I, um, you know the guitar player Jacques Lejour? Yeah. Yeah, Jacques is a great mm -hmm. LA guitar player, and uh, he plays kind of in the soulful Grant Green kind of style guitar. And he had a, a, he does an online concert like every week and I've missed a lot of them, but tonight I just happened to be available and I watched it and it's never the same as a real concert, but I watched it and it was just like, oh man, it was just great to hear some music. You know, he had Smitty Smith on drums and Mike Rengis, Rengos, I hope I had to say his name right. Great organ player. And uh, man, they sounded killing. It was great. So I'd love to get Jacques on the show. We'll see what happens later on. Have you checked him out much? Oh. No, no, I haven't. You know, I've, I've heard of them, but yeah, I, I haven't really checked them out. What was, what was, um, so like, wh where was he streaming from? And like, what was it's, the sound? His living room. room. Oh, his okay. Room. And it sounded like, it sounded pretty good and everything was mic'd up. So I, he had like Smitty, he had all the drums and the mic set up. This today, he actually had a percussionist. I don't remember the guy's name, but everything was mic'd up and it sounded pretty good. I mean, I don't, it didn't sound like a, studio recording or anything but you know they're just doing it for fun they do it every week it seems like i just keep missing it everybody let me tell you, all those of you who are doing streaming concerts please don't do them anymore at six o'clock at night <laughs> at like six at night and that's when i teach and that's oh. what i do with my family so i never see anybody's thing and people are streaming josh nelson's got something that i'm sure is great maria schaefer has got something and I saw one of hers once, and it was fantastic. But, you know, I'm never available at 6 or 7. You know, do it at, like, 9 o'clock. Everyone's chilling out, you know, at home. They're, you know, that's when you should do it. Yeah. Have you done anything like that, like an online concert or, or a thing like that, streaming? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done a bunch of them, but not, um, you know, the, the ones that I've done um, haven't been, like, public for, like, everyone on Facebook or Instagram to – to see um yeah so i i've actually you know I've, I've been fortunate enough to like actually like over the last couple months um you know to, to you know i wouldn't say working a lot but i mean for <laughs> considering what where we're at yeah. um a lot for you know the the current time you yeah. know um with um one cat in particular and i think I'm, i might have told you about him but it's kind of an event event band sort of thing and, um, you know, so this is a cat from New York. He's a singer and a trumpet player. Um, and we've been doing a lot of like, so he has a lot of clients that, um, you know, that, that he's worked for, um, you know, and that I've maybe done some with him be before this thing hit and that have hired him to do, um, yeah, live stream or actually none of them were even live, the, the ones that we've done so far. I'm actually doing one tomorrow too. Uh, mm -hmm. But there, you know, we actually, I think tomorrow is live. So, um, but most of the ones we've done, they're, they're, you know, it's pre-recorded and it's like a virtual sort of like, I don't know, it's whether they're having a cocktail or hour or something like that. I don't even know yeah. what it is, but we, yeah. yeah, you know, so we record the music and so. Yeah, so. it's funny, man. You know, this whole, this whole virtual concert thing and I, 
I actually, I hate all that shit. I hate anything virtual. I hated everything because it seems like the world I, is going more and more virtual. Oh, I hate I, it too. I can't stand any of it. On the other hand, I totally get musicians doing it because that's the only choice you have right now. It's better than nothing. Yeah. And yeah. Like I said, today I was watching Jock Sting and I really enjoyed it. And I remember thinking like, okay, this is definitely better than nothing. But I would have rather been in his living room checking these guys out playing, you know. And, and uh, you know, it's funny because people have been doing this before COVID. And I remember I used to think, like, what is this stupid shit, you know. <laughs> I know. And now it's like it's, what's, it's what you got to do. And I remember yeah. one time, you know, you see a lot of guys doing a lot of the live Facebook stuff. And I'm like, I don't really get it. Like, go do a gig or something. but. I tried it one night when I was like practicing tunes with my Ibrisols, you know, I'm like, I'm going to do a Facebook live and no one's going to give a shit, but I don't care. I'll just do it. I'm practicing anyway. So I'll just do it. Yeah. And I started it and like 15 people were watching me for like an hour. Nice. Like, What's wrong with these people? Did you set up, did you set up like a Venmo tip, tip I jar? Should have. I should, you have. should have, man. Will did a concert. He made like 200 bucks one night. So maybe we know some ones, you know, he told me about that. Yeah. Yeah. And he did, what, what was it that he did his through? It was, it was like a certain, it was some kind of like, series. I, I don't exactly know what it was, but he, it was more, um, it was an event where it was like, he promoted it and said, I'm going to do it on this date. When for me, I just started it. And like whoever was on Facebook. Was yeah. Like, but, but no, he, he, uh, it was definitely more planned the way he did it. And he did very well with it. So good for him. Nice. Yeah. Maybe that's what you got to do, you know? Yeah. I mean, now that you mentioned, I actually did, I mean, it wasn't my own gig, but I did one of those sort of things with another band, some, from some, from some guys I play with in, in used to play with in San Diego area. And, um, and we did one of those and, and like, so we were, we were in a studio together. This was like, this was, I don't know, maybe a month ago or something. Um, and we were in a studio and it was all live. Um, and yeah, and, and it was a thing where, you know, the guy had it set up to where, you know, we, we sell tickets and, and which I hate doing, but, but I hustled it. I didn't, I didn't even post it on social media or anything. There's different reasons for that. But, but uh, I just kind of hit people up um, individually that I thought like might be interested and um yeah and i, I actually made like a, a decent amount um it, it, it wasn't too bad um yeah. but still yeah it's it's so weird <laughs> there was all kind of like there's people like some of the people that i invited they're like texting me in the middle of oh we can't see you or you disappeared like i guess apparently like halfway through the concert like the can't like i just wasn't even in the video at all yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just want this crap to end uh, i have a neighbor down the street who um he does a lot of cover bands and stuff and he's actually very good and he's a really nice guy and for about five weeks in a row we did a concert every saturday night in his garage in the front oh yeah house. i told you about that yeah and, and that was actually was good for my soul. We were just doing covers and I would just show up on an acoustic guitar and I didn't even know half the tunes. I just played by ear and tried to keep up and it was fine. We had a good time. And he did like a, a he has a Beach Boys cover band, which is like, they're good, you know? And they were gonna do a gig and the gig got canceled. So they decided to live stream it, but it was gonna be for this outdoor area. So they, they, they put it on a big screen for everyone to watch it outdoors. Yeah. I'm thinking, how is that different than a band playing live? Like, if everyone's around this big screen in public, why wouldn't you just have the band play? What's the difference? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Now, he did it, and he got paid, so good for him, you know? But I was like, I don't get the point of that. You were playing with him on that one? No, no, I didn't. It was, no. But it was, it's, he has, like, several bands. It was, this was. Oh, okay. But he asked me to play with his Beach Boys band. I was like, are you crazy, man? Like, all those harmonies you got to learn? Like, that's oh, a lot you, of work. The Beach yeah. Boys were, like, pretty heavy, man. That, that's, that, yeah, that, that is serious music. Yeah, so I was oh, like, I, I can't, I mean, I could do it if I <laughs> had the time and the energy, but it's a lot of work. But, yeah, okay, so they're very good, and, uh, but it's just weird that um, the place, 
had them do the video and then they set up a screen and everyone's outside watching it. I'm thinking you, you could have just had a band and everyone's still there anyway. What's the right. What's the, yeah. What, I don't get it. Yeah. Me neither. I get all the safety stuff. We gotta be safe, but I, I don't know. I, it makes me nervous when you watch the news and it's like, Oh, the new normal drive-in concerts. And I'm like, I don't want to I... drive-in concert. I am so tired. Yeah, I, I am so tired of hearing that term, the new normal. I know. I it's like, no, this is how it is it, now. Man. I get it. We need to do it now. That's fine. But don't tell me that's the new normal. I don't want to hear that. that I know. Us. Yeah. That's death thinking that way, man. It, it is. It is. You know? Yeah. And, and man, yeah, it's, and it, 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 it's really interesting hearing, like, you know, from different people that we know, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, it's kind of half and half. I'm not sure what your experience with like, your like what you've heard from people you've talked to about this or what you've seen. Like, I kind of feel like, you know, there's a lot of guys that I know that are, you know, that have been talking about or even already pursuing like another career, you know, and, well, and I can't do that. This is all ever done. So um, that's why I teach. Teaching allows me to, you know, I, I'm teaching. I'm able to teach, so. Yeah. But as, as most of us teachers, we teach to gig. Right, you know I mean? right. My, I teach to support my gigging habit. And I love yeah. teaching. I love my students. I love teaching. I, it's a lot of fun, but, you know, we're all musicians who want to perform. You know, that's a thing, so. Of course. Yeah. I, I, the whole COVID <laughs> thing, I'm in the middle of everything, man. I, I feel... I get angry at both sides. I get angry at all the assholes who won't wear their masks and think this whole thing is a joke and they want their freedom, you know, oh. you know, you're being an asshole, you're being selfish. But then I, I can't stand the people on the other side that like, we can never open up ever again and we can never leave our house and we can never, I'm like, screw you too. You know, yeah. somewhere you got to be in the middle. There's, there's a middle ground here. Yeah. The rest of the rest of the world is laughing at us. They're 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 in shock of what's what's going on here. Yeah. We're the only yeah. we're the only country like what you know that that's that's that it's as serious as it is because because of all this all these I don't know people yeah people don't want to be told what to do and yeah. and the conspiracy theory mentality and all that stuff and yeah it, it's uh, been politicized but so let's let's forget all the COVID stuff so yeah. Let's talk about your, your musician, your guitarist. Uh, how did you get started? How did you get into guitar? What music got you into it? And how did the whole journey begin for you? Uh, well, um, okay. Well, I mean, I, I, uh, I started on piano when I was really young. Okay. And I hated it. <laughs> so, you know, my parents made all, I have two sisters. I've, you know, one, one older one and, and one younger one. And, um, and yeah, they made us all take piano. Um, I mean, I must have been in, you know, probably like in first grade and I did it for many years, but I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, at the time I was just doing it cause I, you know, they told me I had to do it and, um, yeah, and, and, well, anyway, yeah, that's a whole other issue, but, but it, I, I, I picked up trombone when I was in sixth grade mm -hmm. and that I actually liked. Um, I really liked trombone at first. Is it so because of the girls that you got when you played the trombone? Is that the reason? Oh. Oh yeah, man. That's <laughs> the chicks, yeah. that, right? that's, that's that's why anybody plays the trombone. <laughs> that's funny. Well, if if I if I had any game at all, yeah. um, especially back then, like that actually could have worked out well for me because there were a lot of pretty girls that played the trombone in in yeah. my in in junior high and high school it really but, is there usually is yeah what is with that I, I that's a thing but yeah. yeah i i i i didn't know how to i still don't know how to talk to people but then it was you could imagine that was a train wreck well that's so, why i got married i found one girl that liked me and i had to marry her so you know right. <laughs> yeah no that's that's the smart way to go yeah i locked her down early right <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, man. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, but that was, that was, it was an interesting, it, it was a very interesting road because, you know, so like I said, yeah, I liked it at first. Um, and, you know, so I started playing jazz in junior high and I played trombone in jazz band, seventh and eighth grade. And, and luckily I went to a school district 
that, um, you know, so I grew up in Orange County and um, I, I, um, well, I was in, I lived in Fullerton technically, uh, but uh, the school I, I went to was in uh, Placentia. Okay. So I was in the Placentia school district. And um, so, yeah, I mean, so like junior high, I mean, I loved it, man. I, I, I yeah, I just, I, I loved playing jazz. And like I said, I was doing it on the trombone. And then, uh, but when I got into ninth grade, that just totally killed it for me. Mm-hmm. And, and because th- there's, there's a couple reasons, but first of all, it, and this was a defining moment. It's amazing that I even ended up becoming a musician because uh, uh, here's where it started. I remember getting my schedule for the first day of high school and I'm looking at my, you know, my, my, my schedule and uh you, 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 you know how they're all laid out. So first period, you know, you got, you know, uh, Mr. Walter for algebra. And then period two, you got Appleby, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I see like third period beginning band, uh, Wham Off. Wham Off? What's that? Wham Off. That was the name of the teacher. His oh. name was Wham Off. Oh. And I, <laughs> cool I'm name. like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> and then I, and I get in there and, and it's as bad as it sounds. And of course, oh, it's not Wham Off. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not it's, it's not wham wham off. Off. <laughs> yeah it was like oh it's it's not wham off it's wham hop oh so, yeah. <laughs> you feel like, you feel like, yeah whatever you say wham off <laughs> right right and he was <laughs> exactly and like that it was all downhill from there this guy i mean he was just this this fat burnout like uh just Oh man, I mean, at least that's the way I saw it. He's actually probably a really great guy, and uh, yeah. you know. But yeah, you're, I was a kid, and um, but I, I don't know. It just killed it because, and I was actually really looking forward to going into high school because uh, El Dorado High School is like it, which is where I went. It's like notorious for having this great jazz program and all this stuff. Yeah. So like backtracking a second, like I I started playing guitar at the end of junior high. Um, so it was like probably at the end of eighth grade when I started playing guitar, and I actually played my my dad had this old guitar up in the attic it didn't even have a first string on it didn't have the e string so i started teaching myself just with the five strings and i started like most idiots do i can say that because i am an idiot so i'm not insulting anybody uh but (laughs) so so you know um yeah you know i started learning nirvana and like i I was really into the 90s grunge stuff because that was the era i grew up you know, Smashing Pumpkins, Nirvana. I was so old. I was in college when that stuff hit. Yeah. And I love that stuff. You know? That stuff was so good, man. I, yeah. oh, I, I love, I love the nineties. That was like, that was like the last era of, of good rock music, you know, I remember as far the, as, as far as mainstream, like there's yeah, still yeah. good, good, like new music that's coming yeah. out. But it's, that was the last era for like mainstream music, in my opinion. Well, it was, that was an amazing era because I was in, just started college. It was 90. So like 91 ish is when all that hit. It was going on before that. But anyway, I was in college and I remember I was disgusted by the pop music scene. The late eighties was terrible. You know? Oh, I am so glad that I, I was born in 86. So I, so I'm not old enough. I was born in the eighties, but not yet. Not old enough to remember the eighties at all. My memory starts in like 91. So I, now, I here's yeah. the thing in the eighties there was a great underground scene going on like the Smiths and Re, REM was an underground but bands like that there was all these really really great bands the Cure the Smiths there, so there was a lot of good music I got into the Chili Peppers early I love the Chili Peppers it was yeah, still it was one of my favorite bands yeah Living Color was great there was a whole bunch of great bands the band that did it for me that blew my mind was Jane's Addiction man they were oh so good dude. Yeah, such a great band, and uh, so when Nirvana hit, when they first came out, it it was like the second coming of the Beatles, you know. And I was like, I didn't get it at first. I was like, uh, yeah, they're cool. But then when I listened, more, like Teen Spirit was like, ah, all right, it, was, it, it wasn't hair metal, which was great because I hated <laughs> yeah. hair metal. I hated it. I was yeah. a metalhead as a kid. I loved metal, but I liked like Maiden and Ozzy and Deal, like the heavy dark stuff and when yeah. was like poison and rat i was like that's crap but um, <laughs> actually rat was a great guitar player rat wasn't so bad anyway but um when nirvana hit 
second or third tune that came out, that's when I was like, whoa. And then I got Nevermind, and I was like, these guys are so good. The songwriting and the vibe. And yeah. then I got into all the bands. Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, the best of all. Oh, Alice love. Stone Temple. And yeah, I had a guy named cool. Lonnie who was like Mr. Underground. So he was into all those bands like way, like Soundgarden's first record was like 88. Yeah. Well, so he was into them in 88. Like he was all the way back. But he was into like Fugazi and Pavement, all those bands. Anyway, so the 90s was great. What I love about the 90s, not only with the grunge, but all the techno music. Like I was really into techno music, like, like Chemical Brothers and Prodigy and all that stuff. And oh, Beck, Beck was Beck amazing. was Beck yeah. was amazing. Yeah, Bjork. still. Yeah. Oh, Bjork, Bjork is Bjork great. Post. Yeah, I, that was like life changing when I heard Bjork post. Man, that was like, what is this? You know? Yeah. And uh, so much great music, man. Radiohead, of course, the oh. second Beatles. You know, so much great music. Yeah, man. Yeah, and Radiohead, man. They're they're still. God, they, they, they blow my mind. I mean, every album is, is so different. Yeah. And they're, they're one of the, I mean, I, I, they're one of the few bands that I can think of that have really successfully like uh, evolved like that. You oh, know, mo yeah. most, mo almost every other successful band is like, you know, they, they have their thing that, that made them famous. And then when, it, when they start to go off that, everybody hates them. Right. You know, and, and of course uh, everybody's, yeah, but but Radiohead, it's like every album was. I mean, it's it's so different. Yeah, and, and it's but it's all it's incredible. Yeah, I, I, I it's mind blowing. Johnny wow. Greenwood, man, he's a genius because he was behind. I mean, the, the whole band was behind all of it. But um, just the the main thing is the melodies, man. The melody yeah. and the progressions. That's what they're so strong. That's why when guys like Meldow do a lot of their tunes, it works great because their tunes are so well written. They're yeah. Like the Beatles in that, you know, where, where you can have a piano trio doing it and it works great. That's one of my favorite. I mean, he does a lot of, I mean, he does quite a few radio heads from it, but, but that, um, that Meldow trio album day is done. Yeah. Are you familiar? That's where the first, the first track on that is knives out. Yeah. And oh God, dude, that, that album is so, so good. And he did, mean, the day is done is a Nick Drake tune and Nick Drake is, oh, a, is a, I'm huge into Nick Drake. And I'm a huge fan. Nick Drake fan too. You know how I got into Nick Drake? How? So in the nineties, there was a, a VW commercial where they played Pink Moon. Oh, beautiful song. And yeah. I, I, I'm a convertible guy. I had a Miata. For, no, dude, I miss my Miata so much. Everyone called me a fruitcake and all that. I don't care. <laughs> you know? I could never, I could never do that. I could dude, never do a convertible. I had a convertible and I was in love with it. And I get the whole culture. And so it was, it was for a VW. I forget the model, but anyway, it was a convertible and they played Nick Drake, Pink Moon. And it was, it was at nighttime. And it, like, these four friends had the top down. And they're driving yeah. at night and they're looking at the stars, and which is what I used to always do with my convertible. I would never have it because I, I had it in Florida. Florida, you can't have the top down because you'll die from the heat. Yeah, yeah. I would have it on it, have it down at night. So I would do a gig like on South Beach and I would drive home looking at the ocean the whole way home at like midnight or two in the morning and have the top down. All the stars are out. And that was, that's what having a convertible is all about. So the commercial was Nick Drake, Pink Moon, and they're all had the stars. And I remember hearing that commercial thinking, that's one of the coolest songs I've ever heard. But of course, they don't tell you who it is. And then yeah. I was at the record store in South Beach, and they were playing Pink Moon. And I was like, what? This is the song. This is it. And uh, I bought the CD, and I didn't realize it was from some guy in 1972. You know? Yeah. And then he only made like three or four records. So I know that I bought all of them because there's only three or four. And he's one of the greatest songwriters ever. He's incredible. He is. Yeah. He, I, you know, Brad's done like five or six of his tunes or more. I don't know, but he's done a lot of them. I know. Uh, yeah. He, he does that. That's, I mean, talk about, I mean, like, and, and Meldow is one of my favorite 
he's one of my favorite jazz musicians of, of all time. Sure. And I, I, tra I transcribed so much of his. You did? Uh, oh, I transcribed. A, I, 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 yeah, I transcribed his solo on, on Knives Out. Um, and I, I transcribed a lot of stuff from that record. Um, and then it's too bad I don't have that stuff. I've moved, I've moved so many times. I had a stack like this. Like I wrote them all out by hand. I had a stack wow. like this thick of all these transcriptions and not just meld out with dip, all these different stuff. <laughs> so, but, I mean, so you write all your transcriptions out when you transcribe, huh? Well, I, I did then. I mean, I, now I, I mean, not, not, not anymore. Um, I, but, um, there was, there was a, a long period of time where, um, where, I mean, that's all I was doing. I mean, for many years, I mean, like college and for many years after that, um, you know, that I would say that was like at least 80% of my, of my practicing was transcribing. And, and um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I would start out, um, you know, I, I would start out just, you know, when I first started doing it, I would just learn it. But, and then shortly after maybe like the second, you know, the second or third solo that I learned on my own, like then I wrote it out and it took me a long time at first. Um, but yeah, eventually after I was doing that for a while, I remember um, I, I, I started doing it. I challenged myself and it was, it was kind of a, a happy accident because I remember I was, I was, I was like, I don't know. I was probably like first year of college it was in summer. I was like 19 or something. And I was on, of like a road trip with my parents. We were going to drive into Arizona to see my grandparents. And so it was like a six hour car ride. And, and I was so obsessive at that time about, you know, shedding and stuff. I was like, Oh, I, I can't, you know, I can't take a day off. Like, I still got to use this time somehow. So, uh, so that's when I started transcribing without the guitar. So I was, wow. I was working on, I think it was like a Joe DiOrio solo or something oh, that, I, that I did. Really? And, and, and I didn't even know, like, if I'd be able to do it, but I was like, well, I'm just going to try. And, you know, so, you know, long story short, I, I, I figured it out. And when I got to where we were going, you know, I checked it and it was actually, it was, it was mostly accurate. And I was like, wow, wow. so I, I guess I can do this. And then after that, I started just doing it like that. And it really, you know, really helped develop my ear and, and I never had perfect pitch. Um, but you know, I, through that, you know, I developed a very, very good, um, you know, relative pitch. And so as long as I can figure out the starting note, as long as I know what, as long as I know what the starting note is, and I can always hear that because I have like a, an E ingrained in my brain. I don't know about you, maybe just from tuning so much, I can always hear that. So, yeah, you know what I, what I, when I was in high school, I, I heard about, you can it's not perfect pitch, but you can develop relative pitch. So I had this great music teacher that told me to memorize an A. I think that's an A, right? I think that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So anyway. And I know that because I know the E. So I just went a fifth up from there. And there's E. So, okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I memorize an A. And I would just sing intervals all the time. And then this is how much of a nerd I was in high school. We would have my friends and I would I'd, I'd go I'd hit the A. I would memorize it. See, nobody does that anymore. You walk around with a yeah. pitchfork, I'm an idiot, right? But I yeah, memorized right. it. So I would go to the piano and they would just hit random notes. And I got to the point where I could get like 30, 40 notes in a row, correct? You know, because every note they hit, I would just go against the A in my head. And exactly. It's interval. And people go, holy crap! You have, I'm like, I don't have, I have, I had a shitty year when I was yeah. a kid. I had a, a very good guitar teacher when I was young, a guy named Mike Corbin, and he was like a rock player, rock teacher, but he was very good because he he taught fundamentals. So he mm. taught me how to, he put me in Mel Bay book one, made me learn how to read music, taught me all the rock souls I wanted. I was in Halem and Rhodes and all that, taught me all that stuff. But he made me learn scales and taught me theory, made me read music. And um, he, uh, he basically, where was I going with this? I totally lost. You, you were talking about the relative pitch. Uh, and yeah, you were doing that. So the relative pitch, you being able to figure out the notes from, from an A. Uh, yeah, the A. So, uh, Jesus, where the hell was I going with that? Anyway, I had a great teacher, and he taught me how to read music and all that. And I learned how to do intervals and 
and I just practiced them and eventually I just figured out how to how to do it, you know. Oh, yeah. I, this is where I, I remember. Sorry. I get I'm getting old, it's part of senility. But anyway, <laughs> um, so he taught me every song I ever wanted to learn, you know. So my friends in my neighborhood that I grew up with that play guitar, they would kind of make fun of me after a while. Like I'd say, hey, have you learned this new song? I'm gonna learn on Saturday. And they would say, oh, you're gonna have your teacher show it to you? You know, so they would make fun of me and they would learn stuff by ear because they were all self-taught. And what happened with me is I, I, got, I, got, I was embarrassed because I, I didn't figure things out by ear. My teacher would always teach me things. Mm. So I got really mad and I was like, screw you guys. And I was like, what's the hardest song I can learn by ear? So I picked YYZ from Rush. Nice. And I did, I did the whole thing. And it was really hard. It took a lot of work, but I did it. And then once I did that, I was like, I don't need a teacher to learn songs anymore. I could do it myself, you know? And then that was a huge thing for me, you know? Oh, that's really interesting. Cause I, I've, I've wondered about that because like I've, I've taught people, uh, you know, jazz, people that are learning jazz young or, or older and, and, um, and, and like I, I've had to help a lot of them with with transcribing and and you know I'll have to like sit there with them and and you know t t teach pick out the notes and teach them. But I, I I've always wanted like I mean man no one no one taught me how to do that. I just <laughs> figured it out. I mean I had I had a lot of teachers. I had some great teachers. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah no one none of my teachers ever like sat down with me and said, okay, we're going to sit down and like figure this out and I'm going to show you where to play it. And what? No I I don't know I just they, my my teacher told me to transcribe and I so I'm like okay I figured it out and it was harder back then and there was no YouTube and all this stuff and like when I was younger there was no transcription books even so you really on your own yeah I used to, when I got into jazz I started transcribing and I wrote some solos out for a while but I quickly because I'm kind of lazy I was like I don't want to write these out it's too much work you know so I yeah. would just learn them and i also realized that sometimes when i'd write them out i would refer too much to the written page yeah or when i would let's say if i'm learning a really hard solo like a coltrane solo or something which is a hell of a lot of work on the guitar um i would you'd have to practice it so much more to keep it memorized that you would to me you would internalize it more you know what i'm saying like to keep a whole Coltrane solo or whoever, you'd have to practice it 10 times more than if you had written it out. Because if you, you write it out, you can, okay, there it is. But if you're doing it by memory and by ear, you have to just do it over and over and over and over. So it's, it's like more work that way in a way, but I feel like you internalize it more. And, you and feel like you internalize it more when you, when you write it out? When I don't write it out. When you don't write it out. When I have to just play it, that much more because it's not written and every time yeah. I play, it has to be by memory it's yep. like a mental exercise and an ear exercise and i tell all my students no matter what kind of music whether it's jazz blues rock whatever you know like that's why i've never written a book or anything because people say you maybe you should write a book and i have my certain teaching techniques but i always feel like like you know, you learn your, your basic theory and your scales and your knowledge and stuff, but really everything that you need to know is on the recording. It's all I know. like, I, I, I want to take lessons with some guys sometimes, like some famous guitar player or whatever. But then, um, a voice in my head says, just transcribe them, dude. Like that's yeah. everything. You don't need a that's, lesson. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's everything, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I like the, the point that you brought up though, about how, you know, writing it versus not writing it yeah. because yeah, it's, it's a really, I mean, I think it's important um, to do both as we, you know, we both did because yeah, because they, you, you, they both exercise a different part of the brain oh, yeah. and, and you learn it. it. Yeah. And it's a different way of learning like the, the writing it out and, and it's, you know, and especially like writing it out without the instrument that really, you yeah, know, that, that's, awesome. that's the, that's a really good ear training and that really gets you, you know, to understand intervals and be able to hear yeah. intervals yeah. and also, but it makes you better on your instrument because, because you have to, at least the way I, I mean, I don't know how for other people, but for me, I would have to, you know, so I hear the interval and then I have to visualize it on the guitar, even though I don't have the, 
guitar in front of me. And that's how I figure okay. out what, right. So, so, so I hear the interval and then I visualize. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and that's, and that's like so much a big part of, you know, what gets you closer to being able to play what's in your head, which is of course where we all want to be is where we're playing a hundred percent of what's in our head and not saying that that's where, where, where I'm at, um, all the time, but, but, uh, uh, you know, I think we all, I mean, I definitely can, can go on autopilot and, and all that, but, you yeah. know, at my most inspired moments, I, you know, I, I, I can, you know, play from my head and, and, um, you know, yeah. And that, I think that comes from, I mean, it definitely comes from that because you, because if you, if you want to be able to do that, then you, you got to be able to hear the intervals, whatever melody you're hearing in your head, know what the interval is by what you're hearing and then just be able to execute it because you can visualize it right away. You can visualize all the different intervals. So, I mean, I, 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 th I felt like that was a huge key thing for me, but yeah, like you're saying too, I mean, w without writing it, that's a whole different thing too, because, and then you get, you do internalize it better. And, and I'm not sure like how you went about it. Um, like did, like, so when you would learn solos, did you, um, did you like, did you learn how to play it? Like, you know, in different spots on the neck or how to play it all over the neck or how did you, how did you uh, go about that? No, but that's actually, that's a great technique because you learn how to play phrases in different, you know, the same, you know, the same notes, but in different areas. That's a great idea. I would just try to figure out, because, you know, you can tell, like, that's one thing when I tell people to learn solos, I, I, you know, I tell them just like the students mind, like, just do the best you can, try to get it as close as you can. But I try to get it where I can hear, you know, if there's a note on the E string versus the B string, it's a different timbre. Right. Right. So I would try to like, okay, where exactly are they playing it? Because certain guitar players, you can tell they like certain scale patterns or forms in certain positions. Interesting. So, you, yeah. You know, so that, you know where they're playing it, right? Right, right. So, yeah, no, what you're saying, like playing in different areas, like, that's a, that's great. That's like, next level shit i never did that i would just learn how they play you know interesting yeah well yeah, there, there's the thing that you're talking about where you do it without the guitar that's you know mm. that's next level shit too i never did that i was always with the guitar and the running out thing like you're saying it really is a skill because if if i transcribe now and it, it to those who are listening you should probably do it the way andy did it with writing it out because it's, it's a weakness in my life. I can do it, but I'm slow. You're probably much faster at it because you've done it more. But that affects my composing, though, because I write tunes, and I'll record them, you know, into my computer, and then they'll sit there for months and months and months because I, I don't want to write it out. Because <laughs> I make it lazy. I'm like, ugh. Where for you, it's like you just – you're probably fast at that, which is – that's good that you that you're faster at that and it's quicker for you you know that's good it's a good thing yeah well yeah i mean i you know i i don't know i never really got i mean because yeah when i would write them out uh like the way you're talking about like that we were talking about i i mean i i would yeah i would scribble them out really fast on a on a sheet you know i didn't so i mean yeah like i i got to where i can write stuff out real really quickly but um I mean, as far as like making charts for my tunes and stuff, being able to do that really fast, it takes still takes me forever because I have to, my handwriting sucks. Like if I were to just write it for me to read it, I could do it really quickly. But yeah. in order to make but charts, hands, still, huh? yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm lazy um, yeah. when, when it comes to like technology and stuff. Well, that's all other stuff. I'm getting better at it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just, I just got pro tools recently and I'm, I, I, I upgraded my, you know, recording gear and stuff. That's a whole other thing. So I'm actually like the last few days I've been totally tweaking out on, on pro tools and like, you know, I'm actually, I'm surprising myself that I'm like having the patience for this and actually learning it and getting it together. But that's it's a whole nother issue. All of the world. It's like, it's oh. like, it's like learning how to learn bebop. It's like that deep. It's, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's a whole different part of the brain, and I never yeah. thought that I would have the patience for it. But I'm actually really enjoying it. But 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 anyway, back to what we were talking about is um um 
what, 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 what were we talking about? So we're about to transcribe. <laughs> As a matter of fact, here, let's do this. I need to get ice for a drink. Tell the audience two or three of your favorite records that you grew up with and why. And I'll be back in one minute. So you can solo <laughs> set. I'll be right back. Okay. So my favorite records growing up and why. Um, man. Well, uh, one, one of, okay, one of my favorite ones was uh, Joe Pass, Virtuoso. Sure, every guitar player knows that. That was the first, that was like a defining <clears throat> guitar record for me. Second um, was, uh, you know, we, we, I'm sure we all love Pat Metheny, but my favorite Pat Metheny stuff is, is uh, when, uh, when he plays on <clears throat> uh, the Michael Brecker albums. So, I, so uh, Dwayne, I just mentioned Virtuoso, yeah, Joe Pass. And, um, but yeah, uh, and I think we've talked about this record, Tales from the Hudson by Michael Brecker. Uh, and Matheny plays on that. And, Great and album, uh, man. Oh, that's man. It's an organ record, right? No, no, no. That's not an organ record. Oh, so it's that one. Yeah, uh, it's a quintet. So, because uh, Joey Calderazzo on piano. Oh, yeah. It's actually, he's on some of the tracks, and then McCoy Tyner does on some of the tunes on that, too. <laughs> And it's funny because you can't th – those guys are both so similar. Um, and, and, and so it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice blend. Uh, but, but anyway. But I, I remember the working record with Brecker at the same, around that same era. Yeah, that's – yeah, which is that time is, time is of the Essence? Is yeah, that that with one? Mary Goldings. Oh, God. That. Yeah. And, yeah, that's a great – I love all – I love – I go – I remember buying the first Brecker album right when it first came out in 86. Oh man! And he was on that one with Kenny Kirkland and Herbie. Herbie was on the second one actually. Which which yeah. which album is that? What's that one called? It's called Michael Brecker. Oh okay okay. And that was a big deal because that was his first solo record, but he had been around for like fifteen years before that because he was with like you know the Brecker brothers and he had been on hundreds and hundreds of records. So yeah. like, I was a big Zappa head, and he played on a bunch of Zappa records. So oh nice it was a big deal when he made his first solo record. And, you know, that was a, you know, the theme was on it. I mean, shoot, man, what an incredible record that was. But all the Brecker, man, Brecker was a genius, man. Yeah, I, I got to go back to that first one. I mean, I've definitely heard it, but that's not one that I really dug into. But Syzygy, that, man, Syzygy's a shredder. Oh, who, wait, who is, who is it? Who are you talking about? Oh, Syzygy. Oh, so, okay. It's a, it's a second tune. Oh, okay, okay. It's, burner man it's so good i gotta check that man yeah well well anyway that that um yeah that that tales from the hudson so that the i because i i still remember when i first heard that because the the first tune on that it's a tune called slings and arrows and Matheny takes the first solo on it so and like i had this teacher you know it's back in like you know my sophomore year of high school um when i first started learning jazz on guitar and, um, and this guy, he was a terrible teacher actually, but yeah. um, the one thing that he did, which, and it's, you know, I, I'm so grateful is, I mean, he, every week he would, he would burn me CDs. This is back when he burned CDs. So like he, he would just like, he would give me a few CDs every week and I would, and I li would listen to him and, and he burned me all kinds of stuff. But the, but like, I remember when I got that Michael Brecker album, like, yeah, the thing he takes that first solo. And when I first heard that, I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, he just comes in so burning and he's playing all this chromatic shit. And I had never heard anything like it before. It still blows my mind when I hear it. That's another one. I transcribed all, all that, that. So I transcribed some of Brecker's solo on that, on that as well, way back in the day. But man. That's that, on the guitar, man. Yeah. It, yeah, it was yeah, it's it's weird on the guitar. But even when Matheny plays is weird on the guitar. Like it's it's and a lot of it you can't it, you, it's you can't really even analyze it. It's just um well, he, I, he's playing very free. That's how a lot of these guys do. I remember, you know, it depends upon the song and the player and all that kind of stuff, but I remember when I um I learned a, a Wayne, the Wayne Shorter soul for ESP on the Miles record. Yeah. Is that's a hard tune kind of, you know? It's yeah. really weird. And I remember going like, man, how do you how do you play over this tune? So I'm like learning the solo and I'm and I was like it didn't occur to me that that 
a lot of what those guys are playing on those records was like influenced by Ornette. So it was very, very free and open. So I'm trying to analyze the lines and I was like, he's not playing these changes. No, he's no. Free and I was like, oh, I guess you can do that on this song. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like you have to hit every chord change perfectly. That's college bullshit. That's yeah. why I was in that mindset. And I was like, no. Because the chords are like D7, E flat, E, F. And it's like, it's moving up. And like, oh, how do I hit all the chord tones? And it's like, no, like you just chord tones. But yeah. Like floating, you know? Yeah. 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 And, it, and it's, you know, like Miles, like back, back in the, you know, like in the, like the 60s Miles era, you know, he, he did all that shit too. It's you know, very all, free. All, yeah. You know, and, and, and um, I spent a lot of time with that stuff too. And, and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's a really, I mean, you can get away with murder on that stuff, and it sounds so hip. I mean, it's just, and it's really just about, you know, and as far as translating that to the guitar, it's just, you know, being able to move around um, chromatically and um, freely, but, but, but it's still having an intention on, you know, where you're going, where, where you're going to end up. And, well, that's and the thing with that stuff is that, because I, I jam with those records all the time, and I'm just trying to figure out, like, what are they doing? You know, you know for a long time, I still get lost. I don't know what the hell is going on. But <laughs> they're, they're playing so loose and so open. If you go into this mindset that we're all taught, like, you got to nail all the chord tones and, and everything is in a box, kind of. It doesn't work on that kind of music. Because no. the time even floats. Yeah. It's perfect, you know. So, yeah, which is that's what makes it so good. It's so human sounding, but like um, the changes are there as a guide, but you can't play totally free because they do hint at them. Because sometimes I'll be like, "Oh, they're playing free," and they're like, "Oh no, he's playing that change." Yeah, so like free, and then he's nailing that chord, and then free, and then that chord, and then free. So like they're thinking about the form, and they're 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 they know where they're at the whole time, but. It's not, they're not nailing every chord chain. They're nailing maybe every other. Yeah. Thing like that, you know. And I'm not yeah. saying that that's right, but that's my perception of it. No, that, that is, that, I mean, you're, I think that is right. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, it de de depends on the player, but, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I think in general that that is what's happening. And like, there's and another really like master of that. And he actually just died from COVID, like, you know, back in March or April, uh, Wallace Roney, or Wallace Ronnie. I don't know I, if it's just Ronnie or Roney. Yeah, I don't know him that well. I know he was like, they had a group, and he played the Miles role with Herbie yeah. and all those guys. I need to check him out more. He's great, man. And, and yeah, he, he, I mean, he's a master of all that, too. I mean, just yeah. really chromatic and really free. But it doesn't even sound like when, when I, I mean, I spent some time with, with some of his stuff, too, and <clears throat> transcribing it and, um, yeah, it wasn't it, – because it didn't sound out to me. It sounded right, you know. And, and then I'm transcribing. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, wait, this doesn't even make sense. Why does it sound so yeah. good? Right. <laughs> you know. And, and that's the thing. And that's – every. you know, I've always been into all that stuff. And I would definitely not call myself a free jazz musician. But – because I have a very – you know, I have a lot of bebop in my background. But I love the free jazz stuff and, you know, the, the trio eclectic stuff that I do. And I, I love playing music where I can play free like that. And, yeah. and I like having that freedom in any kind of tune where it's like you just play, you just float. And you kind of go in and out of the chains. You float around and you come in and you go out. And that's what a lot of jazz musicians do. But I, I enjoy doing that, you know. And um, Me too. And Miles was great, man. Like, it's like – a lot of the practicing that I do now, I don't even, it's weird. I don't even practice anymore. I just play, you know, not that because I'm too good to practice, but half the time I don't even know what to practice. So I just, <laughs> put, I just put a record on, I just play to it and yeah. I'll put it on and I have to figure it out. Like I'll put on Jack Johnson or bitches brew like that stuff, which is like, it's like way, way out there. And I'll just yeah. play it. I'm like, okay, what do I do? And there's kind of a tonality, kind of, you know, and I'm floating around and I'm just listening. I'm just yeah. trying to fit in, you know? 
and to me, that's a great way to practice because when you get in a band, that's what you got to do anyway. Right. You know? Yeah. And I think, I think now, I mean, it's even more important to do that because we're not getting to play very much or at all yeah. in a live setting. So that's, and, and, and it's interesting uh, because like, I, I mean, you know, none of us played with anybody at all for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, no matter what, you know, like, like in, in March when the shutdowns happened, we were all just hunkering yeah. down. Yeah. And, um, and I remember like the first time I, like, I, like I did my first like gig after, like when I started getting some gigs back after the shutdown, um, um, it was like, I, I, I had been practicing my ass off the whole time. I mean, every day, I mean, I had a very strict routine and, and, and I still felt, um, I, it's st I still felt rusty. It was still weird. Like, man, I've been practicing more than I have in a long time, but this is still, there's no substitute no. for playing live with people. I mean, that's the closest thing you can get. Yeah. I've gone through periods like that myself, especially like, remember in 2008, the recession, then I, I think I went like three, four months without a gig or something. And I had a few stretches like that, you know, it was terrible. Oh. And I was always practicing, you know, metronome, playing with records, all that. But I played with a rec with a drummer and it would just feel weird. Like, yeah, you know, like this is bad. Like I shouldn't feel weird. And I'm talking good drummers, like drummers that had great time. Was They weren't bad at all. They're very good. But I felt weird. It was me. And I was like, fuck, man, this is not good. And that's yeah. what happens when you take breaks. And I've been listening to like a lot of podcasts, guys like Joe Rogan and stuff. And he's a comedian. Oh, and yeah, he, I love Joe. He Rogan. like says like he's like we're all gonna suck when we get back, all of us, like everybody, because you've yeah. been on stage for five, six months. Like yeah. I don't care how good you are, you take that long off, you're not gonna be good. And I did do a gig of uh, early June. And I had taken three months off and I was, I talked about this in the last podcast, but I, you know, I was worried. I thought I'm going to suck and it's going to be terrible. And, and it actually worked out because I played with Will and Will Lyle, great bass player. Oh yeah. And so you never know. Like I, in my mind, I'm like, this is going to be a disaster, but I'll get through it. But it was fine. But maybe the next time you play with a full band, you know, but maybe everyone's going to feel like they suck because nobody's gigging with anybody. So it's going to be like a weird time. I think we all get back that maybe we're all going to sound amazing because everyone's practicing. I don't know who the hell knows, but it's going to feel weird. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that is definitely for sure. But there is also, you know, going to be uh, a special magic to it as well. So. You know, I, I mean, it's going to be, there's going to, we all took it for granted. Yeah. Everybody, you know, I was listening to, uh, you ever listen to Guitar Wank? You ever listen to that? Yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 So Peter Bernstein was on there and he was talking about, you know, what, he, what, what's going on in COVID. And, and he was just saying, like, I took everything for granted, man. He's like, yeah. I've been performing for 20 years, playing with the best musicians in the world. And I didn't realize how good I had it yeah and it's true and even us you know we're not peter bernstein but we're playing gigs we're playing with great musicians and we're having fun and it just gets taken away and i took it for granted and maybe you did too and uh, yeah it's gone it'll come back eventually but my like just doing like a trio gig at the boathouse which is you know it's a nice place but it's not like a high level blue whale gig or anything it's just for fun but I would do anything to do that. To play with eight drums on a stage in front of a crowd and some of them like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that would be amazing, you know, to just I, do that. I know. It's like I a know. dream. It's like a long lost dream. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be, man, we'll see what happens. But um, how about uh, are are you into like do you do a lot of recording from home? Do you have or have you been doing a lot of that or any of that? No. Nope. <laughs> do, do, do you have like, are, are, do you, are you set up for all that? I mean, do you have yeah. like, well, here's the thing. So I started last night. So, so I do 
I was talking about this with Will last week. I'm, I'm, I don't know about you. I, you seem like a pretty diligent composer. I know Will is, but I'm the kind of guy I only write when I have a project coming up. So before the COVID thing started, I'm, a, I'm at that point where I'm ready to do a new record and I was going to do a quartet record. In my mind, I was going to call Nick Mancini and do a quartet with him. And he doesn't know about it, but he left, he moved away. So that's, <laughs> so, but you know, I'm at the point where I'm, I want to do something and I'll, I'll do something. But to, last night it occurred to me, do a solo guitar thing with an all acoustic. So I have recording equipment. I have logic. I've got a nice interface. I've got mic. I've got, I've got stuff, you know. So I started recording solo acoustic guitar, and I realized, like, I fucking suck at acoustic. <laughs> like, Me too. It, you know, so so I, I, re, I wanted to just see what it sounded like, just for the hell of it. Like, I know I'm not going to use it, but how will it sound? So the sound quality was very good. So I was like, I could, I could do something here, you know, but, um, and I was actually doing some Matheny tunes, Unity Village and Cyberborn. Just, nice. and I, I had this idea that I think I'm gonna do a solo guitar acoustic record where it's not a lot of solo guitar, it's comping and soloing. Cause I've done that on one of my earlier CDs or whatever, but, and it's cool. It sounds cool like that, but my technique sucks on an acoustic it's like really sloppy because it's totally different. So now I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, but now that's going to be my thing. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on playing on acoustic. I'm going to get used to it. Nice. And, and that's going to be my new thing. So I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm going to do it. Cause Will did, you know, a recent solo acoustic thing and his acoustic chops are, are sick because he spends a lot of time on acoustic. So he's used to it. Yeah. You know, yeah, so, I gotta, I gotta check that out. I'm sure it's great. I, I saw that he put it out recently. Yeah, it's really good. Awesome. But you just yeah. gotta spend time on the acoustic, man. It's if you're used to playing a 335, then you pick up a Martin, you're gonna get your ass kicked. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what happened to me. I, I, I have beautiful guitars, but I don't like play them a lot. You know, I mean, the, the acoustics, I, I fool around and just strum chords on it. You know, but playing. Yeah like really like soloing and playing jazz on it. it sounds beautiful but man you gotta you gotta spend time with that stuff yeah get, bust it out <laughs> it'll, yeah it didn't it'll kill you yeah yeah, yeah. So I, I was like okay i got some work to do but i think that's what i'm gonna work on for now because I, I don't think i'm gonna get in a studio with other musicians for a while yeah and like will did it in his room and he and there's i have this old mentality that i gotta go into a studio I got to record it. I got to get it pressed. I'm thinking that's old school, man. You don't need to do that. I could do it no. here. I'll probably yeah. hire someone to mix it because I suck at that. And I don't care to do it. I'll yeah. hire a friend to do it. And then I'm just gonna you don't even it. need to mix it. If it's solo, what, what, what even mixing do you yeah, need? But You're just a little EQing and a little EQ well, expression. I, I'm not going to do that. I'll let somebody else. But I'm, what I'm saying is it would be very, very easy for someone to do. And yeah then, and then you just put it out and yeah you know, printing cds all that crap you don't need to do any of that stuff yeah so the good news is it won't cost me anything right yeah but you so you were working on some music uh you, you people for those of you who don't know you know andy is a great jazz guitar player but he also did a singer songwriter record years ago that was really really great and he seemed like you're doing some new stuff recently right yeah, and I, I just yeah, and I, I I've just been doing it for fun, um, and uh, you know, but shit, man, I've I've been really really enjoying it because I have all these songs. I have like a whole album's worth of, of songs that I've written like over the last couple of years, and and like I never did anything with them, and um, you know, so when COVID hit, you know, I just started like recording them myself, just like acoustic and like my vocals and. Uh, yeah, and then I sent them to some friends. Like Zephyr Avalon played bass on all of them so far. And then I've had a couple different drummers. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, dude, it's, it's, I've been having a blast with it. So, yeah, like I was kind of mentioned earlier, I just, like, I, I just upgraded. Um, you know, I, I, I got a, ni a, a nice computer now. Um, I got a really good interface. Um, you know, different interface. 
I got the. It's called the Apollo Twin. Oh, I want to get that. Is that Universal Audio? Yes. I've been yeah. getting that. How do you like it? Well, I haven't gotten it yet. It's it's it'll be arriving on Tuesday, but I ordered it like a few days ago. It's so, like hundred bucks or something. Yeah, yeah, dude, that thing supposedly sounds amazing. I've heard it's great, and and um, so since then, yeah. So I, I've I've been I'm brand new to Pro Tools, and and since then I've just I've 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 just been fucking around with Pro Tools and like learning the the program. So when I get my interface, like I'm, I'm ready to go, but yeah, I have all these songs and stuff that I've recorded. Um, and, uh, I'm probably going to redo everything because now that I'll have that interface and, and you don't uh, want to, cause it's going to sound better. It's going to, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, I, I, it's, it's like, I'm just doing it for fun, but man, like I, I've, I've, it's been so rewarding. And like, now that I'm, 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 yeah, like now that I got all this new shit, I'm going to be even more inspired to like, you know, really go full born and fuck it, man. I'll, I'll release it. I'll release it. Like when I'm done with it, why not? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, and, and I, I, I just, uh, I just did my first, uh, movie, uh, the other day. I, 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 I did a, a movie, uh, I did Contract? it from home. Yeah. It's so for Universal. Uh, what? so what you do. It was for this movie coming out called, uh, what is it called? I forget what it's called. It's some sort of like romantic comedy or something. Oh, it's called All of My Life, and I think it's coming out later this year. So how did um, you get that gig? I got, I got referred um, from uh, a drummer that I know. He's actually a he, – there, so there's a fusion band that I play with because I live in North Hollywood. There, there's a there, there's a, a fusion band that actually through COVID we've been getting together. Like um, we took a break for a while, um, but and then like you know, kind of when things started opening up a little bit, people started not giving a shit. They started getting together again, and it's like a seven piece fusion band. They do a bunch of like Brecker and Stern type of shit, and you know Brecker Brothers and you know, stuff like that. But anyway, it's a reading band. It's a lot of fun, but yeah, it's one of the guys in there and, and he does a lot of this kind of stuff and he recommended me uh, for this. So um, yeah, so I didn't have my interface yet, but I, you know, I, I had a, you know, a, a not as good one that, that I used for, to, to get the job done. But um, yeah, I did two songs, did one of them. Music, or did you come up with your own parts? Uh, no, yeah, I came up with my own parts. So it was just, it was two songs. There was one of them was, um, uh it was it's a version of that hit me with your best shot that pat benatar song <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> but i got to shred on the solo so like they wanted it they said i could do whatever i want on the solo wow so like so i played so like the rest of the song they wanted it pretty much exactly like the record you're like you know really close yeah um but and then the solo they said i could do whatever i want but they said give them like three different takes i gave them like five and, you know, so I did a couple simple ones and then I did a, I did a few more where I just went, you know, nuts into shred town yeah. so they could use what they want. And then, and then they had to be do another one, the same song at a slower tempo, because I guess what's happening is that there's like a dance scene. There's like this big dance scene in the, in the movie where whatever song they had on there, the director didn't want to use anymore. So they're getting rid of that. and They're going to use this instead. So they want to have the two, the two different tempos to see, you know, cause they don't know which one's going to match up better. Yeah. So it was that, so it was that. And then there was another song where I did a uh, you, you uh, mandolin. Uh, oh. And I actually don't even own a mandolin, but they kind of asked me last minute, like, Hey, do you, do you do mandolin? I'm like, yes. So <laughs> then, <of> course, <laughs> <laughs> So you know, I wanted the gig, so I just and of course You're the first thing you didn't know you play bluegrass or anything. Oh, it, it was it was it was easy, man. It, I mean, actually, no, actually, it wasn't easy. I take that back. It it was an easy song. The song was like a minute and a half, um, and uh, and it wasn't written parts. It was just they said like do whatever you want, do some fills and like strumming at the end of it. Yeah, it was kind of pretty obvious what to do. But have you? I don't know if you've played much mandolin. I ha, I I've done it like a little bit way in the past. I used to do. I did some like I did a lot of theater work when I was first getting started gigging when I was really yeah. young, and so I remember doing some of those shows where I did you know where I played a mandolin and I just borrowed it from somebody, and um, you know I would just tune it like a guitar and like 
you know, get that was exactly it. my experience. I had done, um, there was a guy in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where I grew up and he was a really nice guy. And he was like the guy in town for like musicals. He did all the shows for like all, old, all the old people. And this guy was like a uh, man. And he started <clears> doing <throat> some sub work and he gave me musical and it was all guitar. And it was, you know, I'm not the world's best reader, but it was good enough, you know. But he says, the thing is, you got to do a little bit of banjo. And I was like, oh, Jesus. You know, I'm thinking like bluegrass shredding stuff. He goes, no, no, no. It's just jazz chords, chunk and chunk, chunk on the banjo. He's like, just tune like the high four strings of guitar. That's what I do. Yeah. And he let me borrow his banjo. It was, I faked it. And I, I can't play shit on the banjo. But I just played basic chords, like a Dixieland section where it was like chunk, chunk, chunk. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing, musical, you know. and Sometimes, you know, part of me is like, don't say yes because you can make a fool of yourself. And the part of me is like, what are you crazy? Just do it. So, but that's, that's not the risky thing because you can destroy yourself if you say yes to the wrong thing. <laughs> you could, you could. And, and yeah. if this, if this were a lot, especially because this is the first, like, this is the first big movie. I mean, I've, I've never, I've never been on on a, a big movie before. Yeah. You know, like so. Like, so that's a big deal for me. And, and you know, and I'm, I'm stoked now that I got my foot in the door. I hope I can get more of that work. Um, yeah. I'm glad to have my foot in the door. But, but yeah, it's like, so, but, but if this were a non-COVID situation and I was actually live in the studio, I would have made a fool of myself. So, but since I was at home and I, and I could like, you know, it's I had the freedom. Forever. Exactly. So I, I, I yeah. I just did it. And, and, and that, I was still worried about it. Even after I did it, like I sent it to them and I was like, oh man, I hope they don't like, you know, I, they're, they're probably going to like get rid of it. Like, you know, it's like, when I see the movie, it's like not even going to be in there. They got someone else. But, um, but the, the contractor who hired me, she like, she loved it. She texted me the next day. She's like, oh, your mandolin stuff was perfect. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Wow. That's great. So that, so that's a lesson to all of you. Some don't turn anything down. Just, Fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, yeah. Honestly, man, I, I I've that's something that I've changed, um, and I don't, you know, it's worked out so far. But like over the last couple of years, like that, you know, because I used to be very much of like, you know, when I was like in, in you know my twenties and stuff, I was very much like, you know, I just want to do the jazz gigs. I'm I'm okay with just scraping by and like, you know, I'm okay with that. You know, I just want to do what I want to do, the creative music and. Now that's totally different. And, you know, yeah, so I would have said no before, but, you know, a couple of years ago, I've kind of changed my mentality and, and everything. And, and I've kind of made a decision like, you know, then to like, yeah, you know, if someone asked me if I can do something, unless it's something that I know I'm totally going to biff on. No, just say yes and fucking figure it out. Make it work. Yeah. You know? Well, that, you know what? That's a great spot to end the, the conversation. Make it work. Fuck it. Make it work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if you're a musician, you know, because everyone's in a different boat. Um, I've, I've been in the same. I've, I've, I've been very lucky because sometimes, like, you know, you say, oh, I can do it. And then you get yourself and you make a complete fool of yourself and it's a disaster. I've been lucky. I haven't gotten that. I mean, you probably haven't done that either, but some people do and it's like, it can be brutal. <laughs> so yeah, luckily I mean, I've gotten through it and you have too, you know? So yeah, so far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop the recording, but let's, let's uh, hang for a little bit more. But for those of you who are listening, we, we thank you so much for listening. Hope you got something out of this. We had a great time. Andy, uh, tell us where people can hear your music and, and, you know, where you can, you know, people can check out what you're doing. Website. Um, yeah, yeah. So my, my website, it's just uh, andywaddellmusic.com. So Waddell, W-A-D-D-E-L-L, two Ds, two Ls. Um, and and yeah. Then, and everything and Apple and all that? Yeah, yeah. My, my albums are, are on there. So, yeah, you can find it in any of that stuff. And then there's Instagram, Andy.Waddell, I think. I, I didn't realize when I made my Instagram that people do cool stuff, like, with their names. Yeah. So, and I don't know how to change it now. So, it's just Andy.Waddell. I feel like a fucking chump, but that's well, how many? How many? So, how many jazz CDs do you have again right now? Uh, so I, I have two jazz uh, albums and then so and then one like the indie rock thing yeah yeah the indie, 
the, they're all great. I've heard all of them, and they're they're just fantastic. So everybody, check it out. Check Andy out, and he's doing a lot of stuff in the LA scene. And um, thanks for listening. And uh, we will uh, next week. We'll hit you up with somebody new.